Hi, my name is Javier Roque, and today I would like to present to you this institutional research that I run with Universidad Evangelica del Salvador. The inherent resin-based composite polymerization chinkers and the subsequent stretch which occurs once the material has adhered to the tooth structure may cause gaps formation at tooth restoration interface thus explaining why secondary caries lesion is one of the most common causes of composites failure. In 2006, the development of resin-based composites for bulk fill techniques were launched to the market, which offered to be placed in a single increment. Despite having an innovative formulation, bulk fill composite keeps the polymeric sense of conventional resin-based composite. Inadequate like curing inflates the restorative material properties. The limited mouth opening makes it difficult to properly position the light curing units. It may affect the quality of light received by the restorative material. For micro hardness and degree of conversion samples, 4 by 10 by 4 mm quadrangular molds were 3D impressed and restored with filter 1 Bullfield restorative resin. Positioning the curing lamp at 0, 15, and 30 degrees inclination. For B axial flexor strength, test sample two 3D impressed disc 10 mm radius and 2 mm thick were stacked to get 4 mm depth and then were restored, leaving a cellulite acetate band between each disc to be able to retrieve them later. Instrum Electropulse E3000 fatigue testing machine were used to perform the axial flexure strength test, ball on three balls, for micro hardness test, implementing a Beaker's hardness indenter. Three superficial indentations were made at 200 kg by force for 15 seconds in each of the four points of the sample. Indentations were measured and recorded in micrometers. Fourier infrared transmission spectroscopy with FDIR and Nicolet spectrometer, where a portion of unpolymerized composite was tested obtaining a diagram that expresses the lengths corresponding to double carbon bonds. Then four readings, mesial and distal of the upper and lower faces of the polymerized samples were carried out. Regarding the axial flexure strain, it was found a statistically significant difference between angulations. As to top bottom B axial flexure strain, Top surface was slightly superior, not statistically significant, but superior than bottom, so it should be taken into account that the thickness of the material continues to be an important consideration in which the light curing unit and its light penetration capacity plays a fundamental role. There were micro hardness statistically significant difference between angulations, and when comparing the surface angulation correlation, micro hardness values at the bottom were higher than top. The bulk field composite modifying organic phase enhancing translucency could explain these findings. The degree of conversion values in upper surface area were statistically higher than that in the lower phases. As long photopolymerization tip tilts, the preparation walls turns into obstacles for light transmission, presenting shallows or blind spots. The photopolymerization unit angulation affects bulk field composite physical mechanical properties, mainly at the bottom of the restoration. It must be taken in account that the cavity configuration in which shallow or areas without coverage of the light beam could be found because of the wall disposition, due to the dispersion that occurs as the light tilts, mainly affecting the internal or deepest part of the cavity preparation. An adequate light curing unit allows light to penetrate the deepest area of the cavity preparation, so clinician should take into account, besides its irradiance and power, its design, which allows to positioning accurately the tip in reduced space situation as in posterior teeth. Thank you for your attention. We'll meet in New York City.